All right, good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to Math Lesson 2, I'm talking all about even and odd numbers. And hopefully the sound of my scratchy voice isn't going to be too much for you. It's also raining out there. If you can hear the thunder, let's take a look at what's going on. So I'm going to start off with a little bit of review. Do you remember the counting numbers? All the numbers starting at 1, because when we start counting, we start with 1 and going on to infinity. The whole numbers are the counting numbers and the number 0. So you'd end up with 0, 1, 2, 3, and so on, all the way to infinity. So if we were to start counting at 0, counting up by twos, you'd end up with a sequence that would look like this. 0, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, and so on, right? So this is a special sequence, making numbers that we call even numbers. An even number is any number that ends with a 0, 2, 4, 6, or 8. And they can always be divided into two equal groups. For example, the whole number 4, I could divide into a group of 2 and a group of 2, right? The whole number 12, because it's even, I'd have a group of 6, <clears throat> and I'd have another group of 6. Or even like the whole number 26, I would have one group of 13, and I'd have a second identical group of 13. That's a special attribute that the even numbers have. You can always split an even number into two equal groups. So if a whole number is not even, it's odd. Odd numbers end with the digits 1, 3, 5, 7, or 9. So you might see some questions like this from time to time. Which of these numbers is not odd? Now, here's the tricky part about reading this. Not odd. If a number is not odd, that would mean it would have to be even, right? This is basically asking you which one of these numbers is even, because if it's not odd, it has to be even. So then we look at our last digit, right? Last digit there was a 6, here's a 1, and here's a 5. So which of these numbers is not even or not odd, otherwise known as even? It would be the first one, 123,456. It's not odd because it ends in a 6. So half of an even number is always a whole number. Anybody who's ever went and split cookies with a friend, if you had four cookies, each of you would get two cookies, right? Two cookies for that person, two cookies for this person. Half of an odd number will always end in a whole number and a half because you'd have one cookie for one whole cookie for each person. But what are you going to have to do with this cookie? You're going to have to split it in half, aren't you? So each person would end up with one and a half. That's always going to happen when you split any odd number. Only the even numbers can be split into two equal groups with whole numbers. 
So on page 13 of your book that they're going to be asking you questions about this every single day for about the next month, they're going to give you a list of counting numbers, and then they're going to tell you what half of that number would be. If you had the number one, half of that is a half. If you had the number two, half of two is one. If you had the number three, half of that would be one and a half. Half of four would be two. Do you see the pattern yet? What's half of five? Would be two and a half. What would be half of six? That would be three, and so on and so on. The chart on page 13 goes on a little bit longer than what I had room for on the computer here. So we might run into some problems like this as well. A chart here, and they're showing you the number of tickets and what the cost would be. If you were buying one ticket, the cost would be $7. So two tickets would be $14. If you're buying three tickets, the cost would be $21. And if you're buying four tickets, the cost would be $28. So here it says, describe the relationship between the number of tickets and the cost. So what can we tell by here? Each ticket is costing what? How would we want to describe this? I would probably say something like, each ticket is going to cost about $7, right? Let's take a look at something else here. Here it asks us to write a rule that describes how to find the cost of any number of tickets. And I really don't want the rule to say count up by sevens because they want you to be thinking about the relationship of the number of tickets to the cost. What do I do to one to make it equal seven? What would I do to 2 to make it equal 14? What do I have to do to 3 to make it equal 21? Or what would I have to do to 4 to make it equal 28? So the rule wouldn't be count up by 7 because 1, if I count it up by 7, would not give me 7. That would actually be 8. And two, if I counted up by seven, would be nine, not 14. Think about where you're starting with the cost of the tickets, or the number of tickets, excuse me, to get to the cost. And it actually wouldn't be considered counting up. What we're really doing is multiplying, right? One times seven is 7. 2 times 7 is going to give me 14, won't it? 3 times 7 is going to give me 21. And 4 times 7 really and truly will give me 28. So, if they wanted us to write a rule describing the cost, or how to find the cost of any number of tickets, I would maybe say something like, multiply the number of tickets by, I'm going to go ahead and say, $7, right? So let's think long and hard about this rule now. It was a rule that describes how to find the cost of any number of tickets. And we just got done saying, multiply the number of tickets by $7, right? That's going to be my rule. So, so now, 
I can take my rule and apply it here. So what would be the cost of 10 tickets? So my rule that I just got done talking about is that I always multiply it by $7, right? So what would be 10 times 7? I know we haven't talked a lot about multiplying yet, but you should have last year, and 10s should be pretty easy, right? 10 times 7 tickets, you just bring down the extra zero, and so we have 70. Here we got to go and describe each number as odd or even, right? And remember, when you're looking at whether it's odd or even, all you have to do is look at the last digit. And the last digit will tell you whether it's odd or even. Well, the first one, zero, that's not only the last digit, it's the first digit. It's the only digit, right? That one would be even. I'm just going to go and put an E right there because my computer is acting kind of funky, but I do want you to write odd or even, the whole word. 13,798, that's also going to be even, right? 17, it ends in a 7. There's no way I can get 17 divided into two equal groups. That one's going to be odd. 123 ends in a 3. We also said that one is going to be odd. And our last one, 910, we already talked about zeros. Zeros are even. Zero, two, four, six, and eight are the even digits. One, three, five, seven, and nine are your odds. So let's take a look at this guy. Kind of an interesting one. All of the students in class were separated into two groups. The same number of students were in each group. Was the number of students in the class an even number or an odd number? Well, I'm going to go ahead and go out on a limb here, and I'm going to say it's an even number. But the trickier part, I can train a gorilla to go eeny, meeny, miny, mole. Pick one even or odd. That's not too tough. The tough part is do you know how to explain why? It's an even number because only even numbers can be divided into two equal groups. Remember, we talked about that before quite a bit. So you know if the class got split into two equal groups, it has to be even, right? Take a look at this one. It says, Bill has seven apples that he wants to share with his friend. How many apples would each one get? Well, if you can't split seven in your mind, and if you don't know to go back to page 13 and look at that chart, the only other thing I can tell you is to draw seven somethings to represent your apples and start dividing them up like I am. So far, Bill has three apples. His friend has three apples, but we only have one apple left. I have to go and split that apple right down the middle, don't I? So the answer would be each person gets three and a half apples. All right, I believe this is it for today. Make sure to raise your hand after every five questions on the assignment for corrections and good luck on the Socrative quiz.